New signs of life at one of Australia's spectacular natural wonders. On the far edges of Australia's continental shelf, hundreds of kilometres of the West Australian coast lies the country's largest oceanic reef system, the Scott Reefs. Of all WA reefs, this is the most biodiverse. But in 2016, the reefs suffered major damage as a result of a mass bleaching event which affected atolls around the world. So we've had three global mass bleaching events. The first was in 1998, the second in 2010, and 2016 was the third of those. The damage was significant, but years later, scientists are beginning to witness promising signs of life. We're seeing resilient in the reefs, we're seeing some level of recovery, and we're certainly seeing a lot of new corals, uh, juveniles and, uh, and recruits on the reef. So that's really good. But the reef's repair is not straightforward, with about 10 to 15 years of good conditions needed for recovery. And this time around, there's a significant barrier in the way. Persistently warmer ocean temperatures. So we're getting this recurrent heating and stress to the reefs and minor bleaching events, which obviously are going to impede its recovery. After the 1998 mass bleaching event, which impacted Scott Reef, it wasn't until 2010, the next global bleaching event, that it faced heat stress again. But in the past decade, that window for recovery has been getting smaller and smaller, with climate change making it harder for reefs to thrive. Additional heat stress events have been recorded in four of the past five years, while bleaching events occurred in 2011, 2013 and in 2016 when mass bleaching transpired. Sitting 200 kilometres off the coast of Broome, the three reefs are incredibly isolated, which James Gilmore says makes them a good case study for pinpointing the impacts of climate change on Australian reefs. Because of its isolation, it doesn't have these additional pressures, so there's not the fishing pressures or the pollution pressures that you see on other reefs that can confound our inferences about what's happening from climate change and coral bleaching. The observations at Scott Reef reflect a pattern emerging around the world. A major study of coral reefs released earlier this year found about 14% of the world's coral, the equivalent of more than all the living coral in Australia, had been lost in less than a decade. At the same time, algae, which is a sign of reef stress, soared by 20%. And the greatest cause of this decline? Recurring large-scale coral bleaching events, preventing coral from recovering. But the report also found there was hope, with some corals showing strong and at times surprising resistance to ongoing heat stress. This has been observed on Scott Reef too, and researchers are trying to utilise that. If we know this pocket of reef um, houses heat resistant corals, let's protect them. So let's avoid anchor damage, let's avoid overfishing. So if we want to restore a degraded section of reef, um, we don't want to just replace those corals with colonies that might um, bleach and die the next heat wave. So we want to replace them with much more fit, tougher individuals. So we can target these pocket of heat resistant corals as a sort of brood stock or a, a supply for those reefs. Luke Thomas said what they'd learnt about heat tolerant corals can be applied across Australia, with proper management crucial to protecting Australia's reefs. But researchers say even more important to the future of these natural wonders is curbing carbon emissions, and the COP26 conference was underwhelming. Here in Australia, we do play a significant role. Australia emits the highest amount of greenhouse gas emissions from coal in the world. We have a prominent role in these decision-making processes, and that's where we very much fell flat. With the La Nina event declared for this summer, reefs around Australia are likely to face another tough year ahead. Thank you.